Uh, now I'd like to introduce our second speaker, Shivani Rajkumar, who is a third year software engineering undergraduate at SLIP and a software engineering intern at Pearson. She's going to give us an introduction to REST API and Postman. The screen is yours, Shivani. Actually. I warmly welcome you all to ITP Guide 3.0. So I'm Shivani Rajkumar, third year software engineering undergraduate at SLIT, also intern software engineer at Pearson. So today we are going to see an introduction to REST API and Postman. First of all, I want to tell you all, be focused on this session. It's very important for your project. Without knowing the basic idea of REST API, you can completely uh, do your project uh, in a correct way. So there will be four contents. What is REST API, third party APIs, what are Google services and introduction to Postman. So the first topic will be what is REST API. Before moving to REST APIs, uh, let's see what is an API. API, the full form is Application Programming Interface. Okay, now forget all about your real projects. Now focus on this meme. Here, uh, you guys may be seeing this uh, meme in some social media, so may not. Uh, now focus here. This is a hotel. Uh, they are dividing the hotel into three parts as backend, frontend, and APIs. In the backend, they are mentioning their uh, kitchen area, like they are preparing meal for the customers. As a front end area, they are mentioning their sitting area. That, that means where the customer uh, are, are being seated. So as APS, they are mentioning the waiters. Why are they mentioning like that? So think you are going to a hotel and sitting here. So you are hungry now, uh, but you are not going to the back end and take your food, right? You are not straight away going to the kitchen and take your food. So there are people called waiters and they will come to you and ask Madam or Sir what you want to have uh, and uh, after get, uh, getting all the requests from you all, they will take the request to the backend. After providing all your details to the backend, those people will think uh, whether the other food is available or they want to prepare the maze, uh, uh, those kind of things they will uh, process there. And after processing all the results, they will give the results to the API. That means they will give the response to the API and the API. That means the waiters will give you the Result that means the food. That's what happens also in your uh, real projects. Like uh, when you are having a project, there will be two parts called backend and frontend. APIs are uh, the things which connects your backend with frontend. To clear more about this uh, thing, I will show you another picture. See this picture? There is a database. Uh, database means uh, you all know what's a database. Like uh, where we save our data, right? You all should have an experience with MySQL database. So uh, think uh, there are some details in this database like uh, think uh, there are there are so many locations uh, of pizza huts in uh, Colombo. So those details are stored in this database. Here they are mentioning some operating systems and browse engine. So now you are going to Google uh, and typing like uh, show me some places uh, or locations of pizza huts inside Colombo. That is that is a request, right? Are now browsing that's a request so the, that request should go to the database then only you will get the details right so that's where uh, the api comes in it will work as an interface like uh, it will carry your request to the database after getting that request database will think like that uh, kitchen area people thought uh, were processing it's also process like whether these locations are available or not those kind of things uh, then after gathering all the details, it will give the result to the API. Then the API will uh, respond to you uh, as per the waiters did earlier. This is what we call as representation as state transfer. Like you are requesting here, APIs are getting your request, uh, request like transferring your request to the database and also transferring the result to you. Like uh, since these APIs are doing representation state transfer, we are calling as REST API. I hope you all got an idea about REST API, right? Okay. Think now you are doing a project. You are doing a student management system. Such an easy project. So here, this is your laptop. You are writing uh, logical codes, how to say those details in the database or how, how it ha happens, how to delete a student record, those kind of things you have coded here. So this is your database. Now think you want to save a student's details with student ID, student's grade, student's marks, all the things you want to save now. Now think you are sending those details to database. 
Yeah, after getting all these de uh, details, database will think, what do I want to do? He sent me some details. Do I want to save them or do I want to delete them? Do I want to update it? It doesn't know, right? We want to send what it uh, what it want to do. Like without sending that, it doesn't know what to do with that data. So that's where HTTP request comes in. So uh, here we are using HTTP request. There are so many HTTP requests called post, get, delete, uh, put, those kind of HTTP request. So uh, if you want to save some data in database, you should say post HTTP request. Then only database know oh, I want to save this detail, right? If you send a get HTTP request, database will think, yeah, he needs some details. I want to give some details like that. So here, uh, since you want to save some student details, you are sending your request as a post method. Okay. Remember that you can straight away send this as I have already mentioned, you want to use some interface called API. So here you are sending those, uh, sending that request to so save a detail. Uh, after getting this request, database will think, yes, uh, this is a post HTTP request. So I want to save this uh, person's detail. And after saving all that, it will return a response. What uh, successfully saved, but it should happen through the API. Remember that. So uh, after that, we will also get the response as successfully saved. That's it, Sim uh, simple thing. So in the next slide, uh, you can see here, if you want to think uh, you want to get a student's name, so you want to get it, right? So you want to send a get HTTP request. Then only database will know, yeah, he's asking something uh, to get some details. So here he is sending a get HTTP request to get uh, some uh, uh, a name of a student through API, think through API. So uh, when uh, after getting the request, it will think, yeah, it's a get HTTP request. He want to get something. Okay, so after processing all the details, it will uh, return the response, uh, the na uh, name as Harry, like uh, the name of the student through this API. Then you will get all the student details. Like in the next slide, this is a delete HTTP uh, request. So what he want to do? Yes, he wants to delete something, right? So he's uh, sending a delete HTTP request through API. After getting this HTTP request, database will think, yeah, I want to delete something. After deleting that, database will send a response call successfully deleted. This is what happens in test API. This is so important to our project. There are so many HTTP requests and you should uh, uh, use them in a correct way. Uh, so the next topic is third party APIs. Who's a third party? Think uh, in, the common, uh, in the world, who's a third party? A person uh, not in between with, uh, you and your mom. Those uh, those kind of persons. So I uh, think the, there are so many third party APIs. Let's uh, see some examples for them. So now forget about your student management system and think now you are creating an app, uh, such a beautiful app. And now uh, after when customer log into your app, you want to show them the weather details. Like what's the weather today? What will be like tomorrow? What was yesterday's weather? Those kind of things. But you are not uh, an expertise in meteorology. Like you just can't go out and measure all the uh, raindrops and weather, weather related details and th that kind of things are crazy, right? You 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 are not an expertise in meteorology. So there's a department called Department of Meteorology. They are having their own web application. They are having their own database. They always uh, try to save all the weather related details in their database. That's a uh, that's a different web system. So think uh, your name is Miro. So Miro is struggling with their pro uh, with his project. How to include these weather related details? He's not expertise. So uh, Department of Meteorology people are people saw Miro. So now they are calling Miro. Uh, Miuru, come. Uh, we are going to help you. Since you are not an expertise in meteorology, we are going to help you to include weather related details into, into, inside your project. Okay. Now, this department people are telling Miuru, now we will give, uh, provide you some URL like HTTP, blah, 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 that API kind of thing. You just want to insert uh, that into your project and do some uh, fine tune things, and you will straightly get all the weather related details from our database. How it happens? So it's it's Muro's own project, right? Department of Meteorology is a third party, but they are helping Muro to uh, help the help his customers. That's uh, how the third party works. So I'll show you another beautiful example. So Pygmy, most of you have used Pygmy app. So um, it's a trip advisor. 
you can uh, check your driver's way, you can check your ways, you can drive, uh, check your driver's details. Like, uh, but uh, you can uh, pick means uh, their own app, but you can uh, see uh, Google Maps inside Pygmy. How it happens? Google is a third party, but Pygmy is using Google Maps. How, how it's happening? Like this, they are paying some money to Google and getting those API into their project and helping you all. Pygmy is their own project. Google is a third party. Okay, uh, the next example is Health Promotion Bureau. I'll show you how it happens. Okay, this is the website, official website of Health Promotion Bureau and I am in the API tab. This is the API documentation. See here the word endpoint. What is an endpoint? What is a URL? Unified Research Locator. Where are the details are located? Where is the end? Where we can go and take the details? Where is the end? Uh, but here they are uh, telling it's a get HTTP request, right? Think uh, now you want to know how many deaths are in Sri Lanka currently. Uh, what's a PC account today? How many people got affected by COVID-19? Those kind of things you want to know. But daily you can't go to every home and every person and take some research papers and you can't do like that, uh, that right? So Health Promotion Bureau decided to give uh, an awareness to people like I, we will give you an HTTP blah blah blah. Uh, go and uh, search this and you will get some details and you will get all the details because you should know uh, about the COVID-19 cases. Think Health Promotion is a third party. Now we don't we are not collecting those details. Uh, let's see what happens with this. This is a get HTTP request. You guys can think we are going to get something. Let's see what. I'm pasting here and putting an enter. See, here you can see all the uh, related details of COVID-19, uh, local dates, the new dates, the uh, particular dates, PCR accounts, all the details are available. So this is how a third party works. OK, now I would like to uh, go to the next topic, but it's also related to third parties. Uh, what are Google services like? Um, there are so many Google services like Google Calendar APIs, Google Chat APIs. These kind of APIs you can uh, in include in inside your project project and make some fine tunes and make make your project so colorful. And this is the uh, uh, website of Google APIs Explorer. Here you can see so many APIs from A to Z, and you can search these APIs and uh, think uh, and search how to include them into your project inside your project to make uh, your project more colorful and I recommend you all to uh, even use some uh, two to three third party APIs because you will be getting so many experience with this. It will be helpful when you go to industries. So also uh, as uh, in the earlier session as Vishara mentioned, please think out of box like these are kind of out of box features. OK, the next thing is introduction to Postman. What is Postman? Postman is a testing tool. So why do I want to take this topic is testing is something important in your project. Think now you are doing a project, a very big project because uh, you guys, you each team has eight members, right? So you have you should have eight functions. There will be so many entities uh, and even in each functions there will be some two to three entities maybe. So uh, you should uh, think about the relationships also randomly. You can't as I have earlier mentioned, uh, you can not randomly save a student still. There will be a student entity, class entity, they are marks entity. So uh, you should uh, connect with all the relationships and then only you need to create those APIs, right? Uh, you need to uh, uh, test whether these APIs are working before connecting to the front end. Then only it will be easier when you uh, run your application, right? So let me show you how to download this. You can simply browse it and download for Windows or Mac OS or Linux. So after downloading, this will be the uh, UI and uh, see here there are so many types called collections, APIs, environments. There are so many things. Here I'm going to tell you about collection. What are collection? Think you are even you are having two projects in your this coming semester. So uh, for those two uh, projects, you you can use two collections, right? So easily you can find those API related 
pages like uh, for example by clicking this plus icon i can create a collection for itp and by right clicking this i can add a request uh, you can give any name here simply i am giving uh, like get request so here see they are uh, telling like enter request url as i have mentioned you need to request to the database to perform the task so uh, the url will be like http blah 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 so here i think here there are so many HTTP requests. You can change this to post or you can change to put, delete. There are so many things and you can request. So I will show you the previous example also. Here they are telling it's a get HTTP request. I'm copying the same URL, going to the postman, entering the URL. And here the, uh, this is the response part. Uh, you will get all the response. Okay sending okay here see the status code is 200 200 means standard response for successful http request here you can see the same details which we gained from the browser right so think i am changing this url i'm deleting statistical and the dash sending yeah the uh, 404 not found error is coming we don't like that error normally the requested resource could not be found so i want to tell that uh, the URL should be same when you send a request. So there are so many tabs here and uh, there are so many uh, request methods. So there are documentations available. So please search and please try to use a testing tool. Uh, not the uh, not, uh, not only the Postman, there are so many testing tools, but I recommend to use uh, such a simple and easy Postman kind of a, a tool to manage your project. So that's uh, all for my session. So thank you very much for your patience. And uh, a member of uh, uh, MS Club will send all the related URLs in the chat box. So if you have any questions, please ask in the Q&A chat. And uh, thank you very much. Gahana, over to you. Thank you for the enlightening speech, Vanya. And explaining us with the meme was a great idea. It gave us a great understanding about the front end, back end, and API.